What's up? Thralls of Metal here once again. I'm Necrotic Nick, and I have an album review for you. Once again, our friends at Screaming Toilet. Again, check out the site. It's fun. It's full of cool reviews on a whole myriad of different things. Hooked us up with another album to review. So this time I'm reviewing Asphalt Graves' album, The New Primitive. This band formed in 2015 are from Richmond, Virginia, and they're a bit of a super group. This band features Jason Netherton of Misery Index and formerly of Dying Fetus. And he's only on vocals on this, which I thought was pretty interesting, not playing bass. Uh, the bassist is from another band called War Torn, which I'm not necessarily familiar with. On drums, we have Shannon Lucas, formerly of Black Dahlia Murder and All That Remains. And on guitars, we have Brent Perguson, or also known as Postulus Maximus in Guar. And he's also a former member of Cannabis Corpse. So this band has a pretty interesting pedigree right away. Now it's important to note that this is a reissue. This album originally came out in 2016 on Vitriol Records. This is a reissue that came out on Self Made God Records, which came out in mid-September. So right away the album opens with vulgar theology. Has a nice groovy intro, then breaks into blast beats, punk riffs, and pretty much exactly what you're gonna get on this album. Straight up grindcore with a heavy punk leaning. Now, there are some death grind moments on here, but they're used very sparingly. Most of this album is very straightforward grindcore. But the first three tracks you really get with this band is about fiercely socio-political lyrics and themes, and just straightforward, pretty much napalm death worship. The right away of the song, Who Do You Serve, instantly reminded me of napalm death circa Utopia Banished. Very straightforward, punk-oriented grindcore with a bit of a death metal leaning. So this song actually had some crust punk elements in there too. I thought it was noticeably different than the first two tracks opened up, which were very straightforward, just grindcore. There wasn't a lot of heavy punk influence. This one had a little bit more punk flair to it, which I like seeing the variety here. That's kind of difficult to do with grindcore because you have these condensed, bombastic songs, and there isn't a lot of room to squeeze in a lot of dynamics. So when you can, that's a pretty cool thing. No Feast Without Cruelty actually brought on some cool crossover thrash elements that I really dug. And some fun deep beat chugs, which definitely reminded me of a band like Disphere. So, again, this band kind of ebbs back and forth between grindcore and crust punk for the most part. But they have some death metal influence on here as well. The song Angst and Praise actually opens up with a riff that I would say was very close to a Morbid Angel riff, but it kind of interworks into a kind of a grindcore riff later. Really interesting interplay on this. Now, an issue that came across on this album for me, though, was the groovier sections don't tend to have the same impact as the full-bore grindcore sections. They kind of miss a little bit of impact on the riffs, and the guitars are a little thin in the mix. Now, overall, the production is pretty good, especially if you like raw grindcore. I thought this was kind of an interesting break for Shannon Lucas, especially, because he doesn't sound as well produced on this and that's not necessarily a bad thing his drum sound is very raw and actually reminds me a lot of what grindcore should sound like it should sound very raw nasty and in your face so it's interesting to hear like less clicky bass drums and more of just kind of a good solid thump to it and doing different stuff like d beat sections which he's really not known for he's he's a blast beat guy he's a good breakdown guy and there's not a lot of the breakdowns on here definitely tons of blast though I just thought it was a really interesting thing in the mix, especially for him. So now again, this song, Angst and Praise, has a little bit more of a death metal feel to it, but it balances out with the grind slash death grind sound, and definitely reminded me a lot of Terrorizer in terms of how they constructed their songs. So this song was one of the standouts for me because there were more dynamics in it. It shifted around, it ebbed and flowed, and I really liked how they put this one together. And it was a little bit longer of a track at around two minutes and 30 seconds. Most of these songs only range about a minute and a half. This one brought forth a lot of memorable riffs on it, and I think it's one of the standouts on the album for sure. So now on this album, you also get two covers. They cover Disrupt's Mass Graves, which I'm a huge fan of Disrupt. I love their overall sound. They did a solid cover on this, and honestly, I'm kind of a fan of Jason Netherton's vocals on this rather than the original. He does a great job on this, and it was interesting just hearing him just as the vocalist, because he's usually playing bass, too. And he's always had a solid growl. It's kind of a good balance between death metal and hardcore, and just a solid delivery and awesome cadences. 
Now the title track I thought was really interesting. It's one of the few over three minutes. It opens up straightforward grindcore, then moves into a groovier section, which I thought was okay. Again, the groovier sections aren't the strongest parts of this. But then it actually takes on some blackened feel to it. There's definitely like a blackened hardcore feel to this. And it kind of reminded me of a band like Totaled, which I've become a big fan of with their release that came out earlier this year that I really liked. I like the fact that while this album has kind of a narrow focus in terms of what they were going for, they still included some interesting little tidbits of different styles in there, kind of squeezed in. And while it is pretty much kind of a one-trick pony in terms of an album, it has a little bit of variety in there, which is kind of difficult to do with Grindcore because the primary focus is generally being as fast and nasty and abrasive as possible. You know, that's one of the appeals of Grindcore, in my opinion. Now, what I think is one of the most interesting standouts on this album is Exit From Reality. It is the longest track on here, and it opens up unlike any other song on this album. The opening is very distant and very sludgy, and it almost kind of reminded me more of Mastodon than anything else, which I was really surprised to hear. It features some cool off-time rhythms, and it really has an interesting song structure to it. it. They kind of worked outside of their main wheelhouse of grindcore in this one, and crafted one that had grindcore elements, but a lot of cool sludgier elements and some distinct melodies on here. I was really surprised at that. I like how it transitioned from the more sludgy melodic moments into the grindcore moments and still kept a lot of the melody intact on there. I thought that was really cool how they did that. And the other cover on here, which I thought was really cool, was they covered Nawsome's Time to Act, which I am a huge Nawsome fan. I know Misery Index has covered Nawsome before, so it was really cool hearing Netherton go back and do that again because I love Nawsome and they should be covered more. They were an incredible grindcore band and they were gone way too soon. So I'm going to give this album three stars. I really dug this. It's a pretty solid, straightforward grindcore album with little bits of death grind and some surprises along the way with some sludge and blackened elements. It's not really like genre breaking and I thought there were some kind of dull guitar parts on there which grindcore should never be dull. It should always be insane at least in my opinion i would definitely love to hear more from this but i think with their probably insane schedules of all the members on here that might be a rarity but i'd still definitely check out another release from these guys and hell if they ever got around to touring i'd definitely check them out so if you like the review give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel subscribe because we do shit like this all the time catch you guys later